power-assisted brakes are used on all Chevrolet medium-duty trucks from the Series 50 single rear axle model to the brawny Series 65 dual axle model. In past ProTech and STS programs, we have looked at several of the brake systems used on these trucks. The air brake system was presented in a three-part ProTech program. Chevrolet truck air brake systems releases included part one, description and operation, part two, diagnosis, and part three, basic air accessory system service. An earlier STS program entitled Brake Hydraulic Boosters explained operating principles and repair procedures for the hydraulically boosted brake system. In this program, we're going to look at another important brake booster system, the vacuum booster. ProTech presents Vacuum Brake Booster System, Operation, Rebuild, and Diagnosis. Before we discuss the vacuum booster systems used today, let's take a brief look at the boosters you may see on older trucks. Some trucks built before 1975 used a dash-mounted vacuum brake booster, seen here. Refer to the appropriate service manual when servicing one of these units. A unique vacuum booster system was used on school buses before the hydraulic boost became standard equipment. That system had two frame-mounted booster units, each operating an independent hydraulic system. These units are serviced the same as the vacuum booster we will discuss in this program. Refer to the appropriate service manual for further information on the master cylinder and valves used with this dual system. At the present, New medium-duty Chevrolet trucks with vacuum booster use a frame-mounted unit called the Hydrovac. The unit shown on the left is the single diaphragm model. The tandem diaphragm unit shown on the right is used on some Series 65 trucks. The tandem unit is more powerful because the boost provided by the two diaphragms is added together. Today we'll be looking at the Hydrovac boosters. Our program is divided into four segments basic brake system operation, hydrovac operation, hydrovac rebuild, and finally, hydrovac diagnosis. Let's begin with a brief look at the operating principles of a hydraulic brake system. Although hydraulic principles are different from mechanical principles, they are easy to understand. Let's begin with a simple comparison. Here we see a hammer exerting mechanical force on a metal rod. The force, shown by the arrows, passes through the rod to the wooden block. When similar force is applied to a closed cylinder filled with fluid, the force passes through the fluid, just like it did through the metal rod. But notice that the fluid force acts equally on the piston and the walls of the cylinder, too. In fact, if we add a second cylinder at a right angle to the first cylinder, equal pressure will act on a block of wood at its end, too. When trapped in a closed system, fluid transmits pressure equally in all directions. And this is true no matter what shape the fluid container has. A second fact we need to understand about the operation of a hydraulic system is that a fluid cannot be compressed. When a piston moves in a closed cylinder, it occupies the space that had been filled with fluid. This fluid is said to be displaced. Because the displaced fluid cannot be compressed, it has to have somewhere to go, somewhere that it can occupy a space equal to the space occupied by the piston. So we see that the fluid can move in a closed system only if it displaces something else. If we add a second movable piston to the other end of the closed cylinder, the moving fluid has something to displace, and useful work can be done. With the addition of a few pieces of hardware, this could become a simple brake system. A brake pedal attached to the first piston forms a master cylinder, and the other piston can be connected to a brake shoe to become a wheel cylinder. The middle part can be made smaller, and it becomes the brake line. Remember, pressure is equal in all parts of a hydraulic system, no matter what shape the container has. Before we begin our discussion of the Hydrovac booster, let's review brake system operation by locating the various components on an actual vehicle. At the same time, we'll point out a few items that you'll want to inspect when you're servicing a brake system. The master cylinder contains a movable piston. When the brake pedal is depressed, the piston displaces fluid from the master cylinder 
into the brake lines. Note that leakage from a fitting or from the master cylinder itself will require repair because lost fluid means lost ability to carry pressure to all parts of the system. A reservoir on top of the master cylinder provides a clean place for excess fluid when the system is relaxed. It must be kept full within a range of one quarter to one half inch from the top. Brake lines branch out and carry fluid to each wheel cylinder. Although they are small in diameter, remember that pressure is equal in all parts of the system. Be sure brake lines are not deformed, worn thin from loose clips, or bent shut. Also be sure that brake hoses are not chafed, stretched, cut, or twisted. Replacement hoses are striped to help prevent twist. Each wheel has a wheel cylinder to operate the brake shoes. The wheel cylinder has two movable pistons inside, which are displaced outward by the brake fluid. Some types of brakes have two wheel cylinders at each wheel. Watch for any sign of fluid leakage at a wheel cylinder, which indicates a need for repair. That's basically how the hydraulic brake system works. Now, let's take a look at the principles of Hydrovac brake booster operation. We'll also see how the Hydrovac fits into the overall brake system. Why is a brake booster needed in the first place? To answer that, we have to consider another special property of fluids the ability to multiply force. In the simple system we looked at earlier, input force equaled output force because the pistons were the same size. That is, they each had the same operating area. If the area of the wheel cylinder is doubled, the force it exerts will be doubled. But it will move only half as far. In order to make the larger wheel piston move as far as it did before, the stroke of the master cylinder must be doubled. So you can see, it is possible to build a brake system that will hydraulically multiply the driver's foot pressure enough to comfortably operate the brakes of a truck. But it would look like this. There must be a better way to boost input force and keep the hardware at a reasonable size. The Hydrovac vacuum brake booster system does just that. A conventional foot-operated master cylinder, A, acts on the control valve, B. Controlled vacuum provides boost in the diaphragm shell, C, and boosted hydraulic pressure operates the wheel cylinders, D. Other components in the system that we'll mention later are the vacuum source, E, the check valve, F, the vacuum reservoir, G, and the air cleaner, H. Here's a look at the inside of the hydrovac. For the next few minutes, we'll be talking about the control valve, the atmospheric poppet, the power diaphragm, and the power piston. Here we see the hydrovac in the relaxed mode. Note that the control valve is at the top of its bore, and the atmospheric poppet valve is sealed against atmospheric pressure. Vacuum is free to pass through the hollow control valve from the upper control chamber to the lower. The power diaphragm is held in the relaxed position by the return spring, and vacuum is applied equally to both sides. Notice that the push rod is held away from the power piston, so the passage through the piston is open. When the driver applies pressure at the master cylinder, the control valve is forced down. This causes two things to happen. First, the hollow control valve seals against the poppet, cutting off vacuum to the back side of the power diaphragm. Second, the poppet is pushed open, permitting atmospheric pressure to rush into the chamber behind the power diaphragm. With atmospheric pressure behind it and vacuum in front, the power diaphragm moves forward. The first bit of movement seals the push rod against the passage in the power piston, trapping fluid in the brake lines. Continued movement applies pressure to the trapped fluid. The trapped fluid moves through the brake lines to the wheel cylinders and applies the brakes. Now that we have seen how the hydrovac works when the brakes are applied, Let's see what happens if the vacuum source is lost, for instance, due to a stalled engine. Without vacuum, the boost feature will not operate, so much more pressure is required on the brake pedal. The diaphragm and push rod remain in the relaxed position, allowing the passage in the power piston to stay open. Pressure from the master cylinder can pass through the power piston and into the brake lines. The fail-safe mode is referred to as one-to-one, 
because fluid moving out of the hydrovac equals the amount of fluid entering the unit from the master cylinder. Now, let's go back to the normal operation of the hydrovac. If the driver partially relaxes his pressure on the pedal after the brakes have been applied, the hydrovac control valve and poppet move upward and seal atmospheric pressure from the power diaphragm. The power piston is held in the apply position and the passage through the piston remains sealed by the push rod. The wheel cylinders stay applied because their fluid cannot return to the master cylinder. When the driver completely relaxes his pressure on the brake pedal, the push rod retracts from the passage in the power piston. This causes the wheel cylinders to displace their fluid into the master cylinder by flowing through the power piston. The power diaphragm in turn is pushed to the relaxed position by the return spring and will stay there until another application takes place. Let's pause here and see if you can correctly answer some questions about brake system operation. Number one, which of the following has not been used as a brake booster on medium duty Chevrolet trucks? A, dash mounted vacuum booster, B, hydraulic booster, C, electromechanical booster, D, Hydrovac Vacuum Booster. Number two, which of the following statements is true about fluids? A, fluid transmits pressure equally in all directions. B, fluid will expand to fill the volume of any container it is in. C, fluid pressure varies depending on the shape of the container. The correct answer to question one is C. Electromechanical booster is not one of the types used on Chevrolet medium duty trucks. The correct answer to question two is A. Fluid transmits pressure equally in all directions. Now here are two questions about the operation of the hydrovac brake booster. Number one, when the brakes are applied, hydrovac boost takes place because A, vacuum is equal on both sides of the power diaphragm. B. Atmospheric pressure is admitted to one side of the power diaphragm and vacuum is applied to the other side. Number two, what happens if vacuum is lost? A, the pedal won't work. B, hydraulic fluid flows through the power piston. C, fluid flowing into the hydrovac is much greater than fluid flowing out. The correct answer to question one is B. Atmospheric pressure is admitted to one side of the power diaphragm and vacuum is applied to the other side. The correct answer to question two is B. Hydraulic fluid flows through the power piston. So far, we've looked at brake system operation and hydrovac operation. Now, let's move on to segment three, hydrovac rebuild. The reference booklet for this film strip shows you how to do a hydrovac rebuild step by step. So we'll just consider the most important steps here. And as we go along, we'll point out some special precautions you'll want to remember. In fact, let's start with precaution one. Keep it clean. The working parts inside the hydrovac are precision made. It takes only a tiny bit of dirt in the wrong place to cause serious damage or cause an operating problem. Before removing the hydrovac from the vehicle, clean it. And each time you disconnect a line or hose, install a piece of tape over the port to keep dirt out. While we're talking about cleanliness, don't forget to wash your hands thoroughly and put some clean paper on your workbench. You see, all the cups and seals in the hydrovac are made of natural rubber for extra service life. But just a little bit of grease on your hands or a puddle of oil on your bench can ruin them quickly. Begin disassembly by clamping the hydrovac securely in a vise. Remove the shell clamp and rear shell half. Note that on tandem units, there are two clamps and two shells to remove. With the shell half removed, you will see a large spring under the power diaphragm. Before removing it, let's look at precaution two. Be careful of springs. None of the springs in a hydrovac is as powerful as those in an air brake cylinder, for instance, but they should be handled with care. Depress the diaphragm return spring and remove the snap ring. Carefully relax the return spring instead. Gas 
gasoline that on Pima will check. First, check the control valve housing for a broken spring or for dirt, which would prevent smooth operation of the control valve. You should also examine the control valve diaphragm for a small leak. Another condition caused by a faulty control valve is a condition we call all or nothing application. The driver will complain that he gets full application of the brakes every time he steps on the pedal, even lightly. This can be particularly irritating in stop and go traffic. Here's where to look for the cause of all or nothing application. A restriction or blockage in the drilled passages of the control valve prevents proper application of vacuum. Often you will find a white chalky substance here if water has gotten into the hydraulic system. Be sure to find the cause for water getting in. It is often the result of a loose or poorly fitting master cylinder reservoir cover. Now that we've looked at the major points of diagnosis, let's try one last set of questions. Question one, what may happen in the hydrovac system if water gets into the brake fluid? A, rubber seals dissolve. B, chalky material in control valve. C, a hole in the power diaphragm. Question two, what condition is caused by a weak or broken power diaphragm return spring? A, pedal kickback. B, slow pedal return. C, fluid loss. The correct answer to question one is B, chalky material in the control valve. The correct answer to question two is B, slow pedal return. This completes our program on vacuum brake boosters. Be sure to keep the reference booklet and job aid card handy to help sort out your next hydrovac problem. And refer to the appropriate service manual too. After you've watched this film, your service manager will ask you several questions on the ProTech feedback form. Your answers to these questions will help to plan and improve future programs. Remember, with the proper information, you can keep them running. I mean, stopping.